Hey y'all, Irix guy here, and we've got uh, we've got summertime Ken, and I apologize. We're we're working through a minor audio issue, so if you can hear us okay, let us know. If you're having problems, uh, de definitely let us know in the uh, in the video chat. And there is a 30 second broadcast delay, so everyone uh, everyone bear with us here. I'm starting to see comments coming in, so let's get. Uh, Let's get this show on the road here. I'm going to start by introducing our guest. We've got from uh, from Bermuda. We've got Summertime Ken YouTube.com forward slash Summertime Ken. And um, before I hand the show over to Summertime Ken, I want to uh, I want to say thanks for the uh, for the flight to Bermuda. That was that was absolutely first class. I've never been on a private jet, and that was a uh, that was a very very cool experience. I really appreciate uh, appreciate the flight. Tell your pilot again. I appreciate that. And I'm um, sorry to hear about y'all getting stuck on your on your uh, most recent trip over there. Well, thanks, uh, Iris guy. Again, I don't know how this delay. If, if you guys can hear me, I hope you can. Uh, but thanks for that warm introduction. And we are back uh, from Bermuda safely after the. Uh, of course, the hurricane that just went through and flew back this last Monday. So, um, absolutely no problem. Anytime you need a ride, uh, anywhere. I know you like to travel just like I do, so uh, we're always happy to do it. Awesome, man. Yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to hit up the. Uh the Turks and Caicos are somewhere soon, but we've got, now, you beat me to the GoPro, and which GoPro did you get? I got the GoPro, <clears throat> excuse me, I got the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, um, and I believe, is that is that what you, is that what you uh, got as well? Yeah, I got the Hero 4 Black, and I, I actually, uh, it, it took a while to come in. I think I must have gotten in on the tail of the of the initial orders, because, well, actually, I had it a little bit longer than that. You did too. <laughs> right, you got to wait to unveil that, though, you know. <laughs> Definitely, man. We got some uh, we got some really good really good videos of these things in Bermuda, without a doubt. Yeah, so I I uh, I got the Hero Four Black Edition here. I don't know if y'all can see that um, at all, but uh, I'll give you a, a a brief and thank you for the introduction, Irix guy. My channel, Summertime Ken. I, I do a lot of of outdoor, uh, anything outdoors. I like to to fish. Uh, I do a lot of freshwater fishing, kayak fishing, um, things like that. Of course, in Bermuda, um, there's not a whole lot of freshwater fishing. So we so we we, we did quite a bit of offshore fishing. Um, caught some wahoo, some mahi, dolphin, things like that. So I like to just do anything outdoors if it involves water and 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 sunshine. Uh, I'm there usually along with whatever GoPro uh, <clears throat> that I decide to bring along, and, and this is the old 3 Plus here. Um, this is the 4, which my most recent videos obviously include the 4, so I always like to upgrade to uh, the best that's out there. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences today between the Hero 4 Black and the Hero 4 Silver, why I bought the Black, Iron Sky, I'm sure, uh, probably for the same reasons you bought the Black, but for the for a lot of people out there, the silver is the right choice. We'll talk about the differences between the two, uh, but that's really what my channel's about. I like to just go outdoors, have fun, film everything that I see, whether it's uh, underwater, uh, on ground uh, with the GoPro, or obviously um, above ground too, or whether that's with a drone or whatever the case may be. So, um, thank you for the introduction, and uh, can't wait to get started.
Cool, and I hope everyone can uh, can hear both of us okay. I know we've had a little bit of problems in the studio today. Uh, this new new Burbank location is, well, they've, they've been having problems with the telecom, and I, I know that's something that's a little out of out of my league as far as troubleshooting is concerned, but it's some sort of bandwidth issue. So if you do hear a little bit of clipping, we apologize. Uh, what I'd like to encourage everyone to do throughout our show is to comment. If you go to the main page of youtube.com, forward slash irix guy you'll see the thing that says live event live now click on that and you can comment it's probably up towards the top right just like a standard uh, YouTube video comment type thing and we can we can have the opportunity to uh, to respond to your comments and questions live and some of the things that um, that summertime Ken had just mentioned are you know go, going with the black versus the silver <clears throat> and I know for me as well as summertime Ken, I mean, the, there was no other option when you're a professional uh, YouTube videographer. When you're a professional YouTube videographer, black's the only option because it is the highest end GoPro. Uh, one thing that GoPro did with the uh, with the Hero 4 Black that, that kind of confused a lot of people, it confused people that that may not understand the reason why the black does not have an, an LCD display, but a lot of people were puzzled by that. Why does this cost more? Than the silver, it doesn't have all the features that the silver has. Well, actually, under the hood, with the uh, video settings, you're getting 4K at 30 frames per second, and then you're also getting uh, you're getting 1080p at 120 frames per second, which is absolutely incredible uh, for retiming videos. And I know uh, uh, summertime Ken had an opportunity to retime. What's the uh, what was the clip you shot in in uh, 19 at 120 frames per second? Was it the yeah. Nash's Trace or somewhere? We did. We did. The Natchez Trace is a, uh, I, I guess, a historic landmark in the United States. It, it goes from uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, all the way down through Mississippi, um, and just has some beautiful views this time of year with the fall colors of the trees and everything. So decided to take the GoPro out there and really test out the uh, the 4K capability. Of course, you know, just in comparing that to uh, the older model, the 3 Plus, the 3 Plus had 4K resolution capability, but it was in 15 frames per second. And Iris Guy, I know you tried it out on your channel. Um, you know, it just didn't really live up to it at the 15 uh, frames per second. So uh, tried this out at the Natchez Trace the other day and uh, was really pleased with, uh, with how it turned out. And then, and you're also right, I mean, the, I think the real. You know, if you're speeding up or slowing down your video, um, the the 1080p at 120 frames per second is is phenomenal. It's really really good. Uh, so it all depends on on what you're filming. You know, how fast you're 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 going when you're filming, and then what you plan to do with that video, whether it's speed it up or slow it down. But the 1080p at 120 frames per second, and really to get back to you know, that's that's the reason that I bought. Um, the 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 black edition was to be able to do that because the silver um, you know and, and I'll be honest with you you know having the the, the LCD screen on the back um, that is a a plus to have on the silver but the the upgraded processor and the performance of the Hero Four Black with that capability at 120 frames per second on 1080p. I was sold on that. You know, the hundred dollar difference I think is worth it for the for the quality and the type of video that that that, that we take, and I know Irix guy and your adventure channel that you take as well. Yeah, that's some really good points. And then uh, and then also looking at it from another spectrum, if someone wanted to, maybe they've never had a GoPro before. Maybe they've got one of the original GoPros, say a you know, a Hero One or something in in that age range. Uh, something people may want to consider too, if they're wanting to get into it. Uh, GoPro Four also came out. They had the obviously the black, which we both had, the highest end. Then the silver that you mentioned with the uh, LCD display on the back. But then you can even bump all the way down to a GoPro Hero. Uh, it's just called GoPro Hero, but it's a GoPro Four, GoPro Hero Four. They just call it GoPro Hero. Now it's an entry level GoPro. Obviously, someone would expect to spend probably just a little bit over a hundred bucks U.S. Now, although it does do decent uh, HD quality, it does 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is sufficient for most. Now, obviously, if you're going to do retiming, as you had mentioned, that higher frame rate like you get with the uh, 
with the silver 160 uh, frames per second at 1080p or the black 120 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, with that entry level GoPro, it's not going to be optimal for uh, for using for retime video stuff that's sped up or slowed down. And then also, there's some other kickers with that. And I think GoPro was a genius from a uh, from a design perspective because they added certain limitations to that camera, like you can't uh, you can't take it out of the case. I don't think you can change the battery. Are you familiar with the limitations of the entry level GoPro? I know you were talk we were talking about it on the plane. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 not as familiar with that one. Um, just because, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, in, in, in the intro, we, you know, for what we film for and for what you film for too, you know, we, I want the best of the best. And when there's an opportunity, when, when, when that comes up, I'm going to get that. So I haven't researched the GoPro here, but I think from a marketing standpoint, it's a brilliant idea because here you are, you know, there, there's a GoPro for everybody out there, and, and the Hero 4 Black might not be, you know, that's not for everybody. Um, you know, the Hero 4 Silver is, and, and I'll tell you just from a performance standpoint, the Hero 4 Silver and the Hero 3 Plus Black are identical cameras outside of the LCD screen, of course, on the on the 4 Silver. So it's always important to research what's, what's out there, um, and know what the capabilities are, what it can do. But I think it's a great marketing pitch because GoPro is now getting back into the market, obviously publicly traded now, they're a public company. And so why not, you know, here you release this new camera, the GoPro Hero 4. There are a lot of people who don't know a whole lot about it, don't even know what it can do. And a great entry-level camera, as you said, if you just want an outdoor camera that films 1080p, the, the hero that they just introduced is, is, is a great entry-level camera to get. But it's all about, you know, what you're doing, what you're filming with. If you just want to get into it, that's an awesome camera to get. And it's at a great price. You know, you don't have to spend the $500 for the four black or, or the $400 for the four silver. Um, it's a great, it's a, it's a 1080p camera, 30 frames per second. Excellent outdoor camera. Um, and it's a great entry level camera. So they did a great job of kind of remarketing themselves to some people who might not might not need the full blown want to spend five hundred dollars on the camera. Um, as far as the specifics on it, I'm not I'm not totally sure on that. But but they did a great job from a marketing standpoint for sure. And it's a great entry level camera to get into for an outdoor camera. Yeah, and to your points there about them being publicly traded, and I know there's uh, there's some signals that I've seen with the Hero 4, and a lot of people may not have picked up on this, but obviously with every GoPro, and this is something that I've appreciated that GoPro's done. This right here is GoPro suction mount. I just took the GoPro Hero 4 off. But something that GoPro's done is that they've retained this, this mounting mechanism. So the good thing about that as I as the GoPros evolved, and as my passion for using the GoPro has has evolved, I've collected quite an abundance of mounts. I mean, I've got mounts that, uh, and you can find these if you go to snagbear.com. This little guy right here, snagbear.com. I post all of my uh, all of my equipment there. But this is from Cam Kicks right here. This is a uh, this is a mount that you can manipulate, and it's got a clamp on it. You could clamp to a bookshelf. You could clamp to the top of a boat windshield, etc. And regardless of whether you're using a Hero Four, a Hero, a Hero, a Hero Two, a Hero Three, Hero Three Plus, you've got this same type mount. And that's something that GoPro has done that's just made uh, made the upgrade path less of a less of a burn. Because like anything that that you buy, and one thing about the Hero Four that that wasn't a disappointment, but it was a a shift from if, if you were like Summertime Ken and I, you had the Hero 3 and the Hero 3 Plus, and both of those camera models used the same form factor battery, so you didn't have to worry about another battery. With the Hero 4, it ushered in the new design of a battery, so uh, when, if, if you are upgrading from your older model GoPro, you're going to have to get new batteries because it's a different form factor. But as far as your mounts, and we'll go into some other cool mounts here in a minute. I've got, I've got one that's just going to make you uh, light up with excitement, but that that's coming later in the show. But yeah, GoPro is is brilliant when it comes to uh, when it comes to marketing, 
And, and I think this Bluetooth feature also foreshadows the uh, possibly foreshadows the FPV capabilities of a GoPro. Maybe they would send uh, FPV over uh, over Bluetooth or 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 whatever, because you know, with, with the Wi-Fi, if you use it with a DJI Phantom, for example, that Wi-Fi is going to interfere with your uh, with your with your Phantom. And actually, <laughs> summertime, Ken and I encountered that. It went straight into the ground. I'm like, what's going on? Looked down, had a uh, had a GoPro in the chesty, and it, it had Wi-Fi enabled, and it caused the Phantom to go crazy. But um, yeah, so there's a GoPro for everyone, like. Uh, uh, like like summertime Ken had just mentioned and and something something that I wanted to to talk about from a uh, from a from an outdoor use perspective what uh, what have you what has been your most awesome mount for, from a, from a kayaking perspective when you go out and fish off the kayak what are the different types of uh, of GoPro filming perspectives that you've been able to accomplish yeah, and I, you know, it's it's funny because when I started out doing this a couple of years ago, and 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 got my first GoPro, which is GoPro Hero Two, um, which got arrested so it's at the bottom of, of of a lake right now in about 50 feet of water. But um, uh, that was my own fault. Um, but you know, uh, I, I started out. Um, I I do a lot of freshwater kayak fishing. I do a lot of kayaking in general. And you know when you're kayaking, you don't you don't want to you don't have to worry about you know clipping something to a kayak, having it fall off, things like that. So I mean the the head strap mount, um, which I actually don't have any of my mounts here. They're um, they're actually in my car. Um, but the head strap mount, I don't know if you have it there, uh, is the easiest uh, for fishing, and it, it's probably the best perspective too, um, because you don't have to worry about anything. It's on your head, and you're looking at, you know, you're filming everything that you're looking at. Um, now, as my channels evolved, and as I've evolved, evolved in in just specifically in kayak fishing, um, there are some mounts, um, suction cup mount, um, different mounts, and you know, I, I'll give you one for instance. Um, I have two uh, fish rod holders behind my seat, in my kayak, and. I use a Dynex monopod, actually, that fits right into the um, the uh, the rod holder, and so it's you know it's up in the air, extends 72 inches, and it can get a good perspective from the back. So another advantage too is if you have two GoPros, you know you can have one mounted up front on your kayak, one from from one from the back um, that can give another perspective of it. Um, but I, I'd say my all-time favorite is is, is I, I stick old school with what I started with is the uh, the head strap. It's just uh, it's reliable, um, inexpensive, and you don't have to worry about messing with anything or, or the camera turning. You know where that camera is pointed, and uh, you can capture everything. You know, same thing with you know just as you, you know, the chesty mount is is very similar. Um, doesn't really work that well with kayaking, but I know from some some. Uh, moped videos from Bermuda. That was an awesome perspective. A, a much different perspective than having the camera. It's amazing the difference in having a camera here versus having a camera here, and what that shows and what the people can see. So, you know, just a difference in that in that amount of space uh, can can make quite a difference. So it's 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 real interesting. I'd have to say the head strap mount though for fishing for me. Cool, very very cool, and that's uh, that's that's one of the other things that obviously our fans are probably familiar with is that is that you know this GoPro is enabling it's enabling people to go out, enjoy these activities like kayaking, which is good exercise, mountain biking, uh, you name it. You know you can strap on a GoPro and a head strap or a chest or whatever, and you can you can it better motivates you to uh, to want to work out and stuff. And this right here is just one of many mounts. This is a uh, this is a telescopic monopod, and you can find it on snagbear.com as well. But just another example of one of the uh, tons of, of of mounts that you can get for uh, for a GoPro, and it folds up when it's not in use, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. But what I want to bust open now, and actually. <laughs> 
you're going to have to watch the unboxing video later because I'm not going to uh, not going to fully reveal this. But this right here, if you've seen monopods, this is going to revolutionize the monopod experience. And this this is made by a company called Polar Pro. Really cool people. Um, this is called the Power Pole. And I'm just going to tell you about what this does. You, you may look at it and say, oh, that's just another monopod with a fancy box. And it's not. What this will do, I'm going to read off some of the specs. It has a 5,400 milliamp battery in it. So this thing will give your GoPro about over eight hours of GoPro filming time. But not only can you, because it's got batteries built into the monopod. I mean, how brilliant is that? And it's got USB ports so that you can charge your, uh, it's got two USB ports actually. So if you're out there in the field, I know like, like we have the GoPro Black, so we don't have the LCD on the back. We could add it on if we wanted to. But if we pull out our smartphone to, to check our alignment before we get on a kayak, before we get on a snowboard or whatever, it's, uh, it's good to have that, the ability to recharge your phone. So, so, uh, so Polar Pro took into account the types of things that a serious GoPro person may need to do in the field and they, if they packed it all into this device that you're going to have on your back or in your hand or, or in your backpack or whatever when you're traveling. And like I said, I'm going to unbox this. This this is just a teaser right here. But you're going to have to watch the unboxing video on youtube.com forward slash irixguy and I'm going to show you in depth how awesome this power pole is. So just one of one of the many GoPro accessories to look forward to and um, I don't know let's uh, let's talk about we've talked about all the good and and this isn't a this isn't just a hundred percent biased broadcast I mean you know we're we're looking at the pros and cons of, of the GoPro so what I want to do now is is go back and forth with summertime Ken as well as our audience so comment on this video and we'll try to We'll try to respond live right now during this live broadcast. But what problems have you encountered so far with the Hero 4? I know the only problem I've encountered so far is the uh, is a memory. It says SD error, S D E R R, and it'll stop recording before approximately two minutes. Now that was with, and I'm not bashing the manufacturer because they make good memory cards. That was with a SanDisk Class 10 memory card. To resolve the situation, what I did. I replaced it with a uh, Kingston Class 10 memory card, a micro SD card, obviously, and that resolved the issue. So there seems to be, <coughs> at least now, current firmware for Hero 4, there seems to be some compatibility issues. And and I see we got uh, we've got Code 3 Productions. What's going on, man? Hey, but how are you? I'm sorry I'm late. You know, I'm running around doing a bunch of stuff. You know, uh, you can see my setup's a little different. I'm holding a microphone today. You know, it's, it's, it's a little different. <laughs> How are you, summertime, Ken? How you doing? Doing great, brother. How you doing? Good, thanks, man. <laughs> Let me grab my trusty Hero 4 I got going on over here. That's all right. And then let me grab my Which, uh, Hero 3 Plus. You know, uh, Irix guy, I wanted to... What have you found with the Hero 4? Anything good or bad? Nothing yet, actually. Um, I If you follow my Instagram, um, people that are, anybody that's watching, you'll see I take a lot of pictures with the GoPro, actually. But um, I find that the image quality on the, the Hero 4 is actually better, by, you know, substantially with the pixel rate. You could just tell, you know, using my uh, iPhone 6 Plus. It's gorgeous. What uh, what type of memory card do you use with it? What type of micro SD? Oh, I'm using a uh, SanDisk uh, Class 10, and I usually have a 64 gig card in there, but today I got a 16. Hey, Iris guy. I don't know if I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I may have had a bad card because mine was a SanDisk, and it would. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about. I can hear you. My. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I've got a SanDisk as well, uh, 32, and and I, I haven't had any problems with it. I, I've read some reports online where there have been problems with it, um, but I have not had any problems with it. You were you were talking a little bit before Code Three joined about, you know, what are what are some of the 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 negatives, I guess, uh, of the of the four, and you know. 
one thing that we haven't talked about is the the totally redesigned uh, not only where the battery is located oh, yeah. within the camera, but uh, you know the battery life of a GoPro ha has has always been a a hot topic. It's always been something that people talk about, and I, you might have been going into that a little bit later. And I'm sorry if I jumped the gun on that, but um, you know I would say that's one thing they really you know it, a lot of it too is the performance of in the GoPro Hero 4 Black, especially being able to film in 4K at 30 frames per second. Uh, you know, 1080p at 120 frames per second. It 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 really takes a lot out of that battery, and I find that I get less battery life off of the new redesigned battery. And um, we'll show it here in just a second the difference in the three plus battery and the four. But the four is skinnier, it's smaller, and the battery compartment where you actually put it into the camera is a totally redesigned. Now, I will say that's that's probably good. But as far as battery life, I think they took a step down on that. Yeah. I also don't like the fact that you actually have to buy an external charger no matter what for your GoPro batteries. I think that's what do you think with. about the battery life code three? Uh, tell you the truth, I haven't been that in depth into it, but um, I'm actually starting a vlogging um part on my channel, and I'm gonna use the Hero four, so I could actually tell you with that one. But let me just—I'm actually taking this these GoPros apart here. As uh, summertime, Kim was saying, these are the two batteries. So here's the Hero four battery. And then here's the uh, Hero 3 battery. So yeah, it, it is uh, actually it is a lot smaller than the uh, the Hero 4 battery is a lot smaller than the Hero 3 or 3 Plus battery. You know what's oh, weird? Yeah, I was looking in my in my carrying case here. The uh, the yeah, I've got a, and you can find these on snagbeer.com. This is a, uh, this is a zinced case, and it's just a really good, uh, really good looking case for your GoPro. But what I was curious about was the, uh, you know, normally if you if you've ever dealt with Wasabi power batteries, you know that they typically have a higher milliamp rating than the uh, than the GoPro branded battery. But yeah. at least the current model Wasabi's, there's a thousand one hundred and sixty milliamps. Just like the GoPro, so I'm wondering how much room for growth there is as far as uh, you know putting a longer-lasting battery in the Hero 4. If anybody will come out with one that that lasts significant or is rated much higher than the uh, than the GoPro brand or not. Well, I had to do so. I do have to say something about the uh, the Hero 4. Going back to the firmware really quick. Um, on my 6 Plus, I have the iPhone 6 Plus. Um, I didn't put the unboxings up for either one yet. You know, the Hero 4. Well, the 6 Plus, I ran into a lot of computer troubles, but that's another story. But um, I actually found that with my Hero 3 Plus, you know, it runs 4K. And I found that with this 4K, it does not work on the 6 Plus. It's not, uh, I guess, formatted for it or whatever. But my Hero uh, 4, I can use with the app. It's like, I don't know, it's supposedly like the 1080p screen, obviously, isn't enough to hold 4K. It's a bunch of both. I found out that it worked with the Hero 4, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that that is that is interesting. Now, are you using? Uh, did you say you're using iPhone 6 or the 6 Plus? Uh, 6 Plus, 6 Plus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, 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 you know, I don't even know if I've tried it. I did it with 1080p when I was riding my bike, but I don't think I've tried the app with the 4K yet. Yeah, you know, but I, I find that ridiculous because that's what I use as a viewfinder. But, I mean, if they implemented a touchscreen on the back of the silver, I don't know why they couldn't do it on the on the, the black edition. Well, I, have, I have the answer for that, actually. Uh, you, you were telling something about that on your YouTube channel. I watched that video. Yeah, I watched that, yeah. I did a lot of research on it because, you know, I'm going back now and I'm like, well... God, there's a hundred dollar difference between the silver and the black, and the silver has an LCD screen on the back. Exactly. And the black doesn't. So you know, so you're paying for that performance of frame rate basically for the black, mm -hmm. with, with not getting the LCD screen. And is that a hundred dollar difference? Well, the difference, the reason why GoPro, they literally could not put 
the LCD screen on the back because of the upgraded processor to be able to do that, to be able to film at 120 frames per second on 1080p and, and 30 frames per second on 4K. So as the camera evolves, I think there's going to be some some structural issues. They did a great job by having the 3 Plus and the 4 be the same exact size, be able to fit in all, yeah. all the same components. But if you notice, and Iris Guy, you mentioned this to me the other day, when you charge this 4, it heats up. It gets really hot. Yes, yes. And that's something that I've that I've heard of, and I've and I noticed it. And when you're filming, and you know that's the that's the upgraded processor in the four. So they literally, from a design standpoint, could not put the screen on the back of the four because on the four black because of the upgraded processor and the abilities that it can film at. So that's the reason why. Um, you know, it's interesting from a marketing standpoint, the price difference and and having that on there. I think that was probably a big decision for them. Uh, but it'd be interesting to find out, you know, how they price pointed that with, okay, the silver has the screen but doesn't have the upgraded capabilities. It'd be interested to see who buys which one and why. You know, that's I, I already know I, they're buying the black. <laughs> I, have a market, I have a marketing degree, so so I, I always look at stuff like that. But you know, as we talked about earlier before you before you showed up, uh, Code Three. I bought the, the black because of the performance and because of being able to fast forward it, slow it down, you know. And I think that's just going to continue with this camera. From a design standpoint, though, that's the issue they came up with with uh, with not having the LCD screen on the back of the black. Well, well, quite honestly, you know, <laughs> I got to say this. I kind of just bought the four for my YouTube fans, you know. I had to do all the latest unboxings. But unfortunately, like I was saying before, not everything worked in my favor. I still haven't uploaded the 6 Plus unboxing because of my MacBook. I actually ran out of storage on my MacBook, which is surprising. You know, it baffled me. But, you know, that honestly, I wouldn't have upgraded, but I'm glad I did in a sense because I, I definitely do see the difference in performance with the, with the Hero 4 Black Edition. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I had the... Um, I had two years ago, I had, had the uh, Hero 3 White and the Hero 3 Black I bought in the same year. I actually sold the Hero 3 Black last year, and this year I uh, posted on Instagram that I was selling the Hero 3 White, and actually I sold it the next day. I sold it for, I think, uh, $125, which wasn't, I mean, that's definitely not bad for Hero 3 White to sell for. Oh, you know, we were talking earlier about, the, I mean, there's a GoPro for everybody, and yeah. and it's it's not, you know, my very first GoPro was a Hero 2. I never owned an original Hero 1, uh, but there's a GoPro for everybody, and and all of them are great. You know, it's just a matter of what you film and what you do. We, we exactly. Earlier, we, we want the best of the best. We want the ability to capture the best video for our fans. And so that's why I always go immediately for, you know, when Hero 4 came out, I went Hero 4 Black. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and from a performance standpoint, it is, it's, it's the best of the best. The LCD screen, you know, so be it. I mean, if you look at actually the LCD, you know, it still has the attachment on the back where you can put the, the LCD backpack on. So, um, you know, it's, that's not a huge deal for me. Um, I, I wanted the performance out of it. it was, we, we film a lot of, you know, a lot of fast action stuff, and we, we speed stuff up, slow stuff down. So, so that's, that's why I went with the black. So, Well, if you look at it, actually, it makes a lot of sense that they put the, um, the battery on the bottom, actually, in the Hero 4. Because if you look at it, I'm not sure if you talked about it before, but the back of the Hero 3 Plus, there's the battery compartment. And, I mean, in order to get through that, you had to take the LCD backpack off and all that, you know, go through a big process. I mean, with the Hero 4, you could just slide it right on. You don't have to worry about the battery. Great point. And, and when I did the unboxing of this on my channel, I was a little bit skeptical because I was like, is that really easier? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But we've gone out. I've gone out in the kayak and tested it. I mean, you know, there's... That's the frustrating thing when you've you've got a fish on or, or you're you're in the middle of something and battery died. You know you got to change a battery or, or you're you know and and this did make it more user friendly. I want to talk about one other main difference that they did between. And I don't know. We might have talked about this. Y'all might have talked about this before. Between the three plus and the four is the settings menu. Uh, made oh, it yeah. a whole lot more user friendly, and I, I really thought, for me personally, that was a big upgrade. Um, there is a settings button now on the side of the Hero Four, 
Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to see it. It's all in black. But it has, it has a wrench logo on it, just like the wrench logo in the menu on the old 3 Plus or 3. <clears throat> and when you're in either photo or video, whatever you might be in, you just hit that wrench button on the side, and it immediately brings up the settings. You can change from 4K to 1080p, you know, whatever you want to change it to. Uh, if you're in time lapse, you can change it to X amount of pictures per se, you know, whatever it is. That's a really key user-friendly software upgrade on this that I think is is a subtle change, but I think it just makes it user-friendly. Well, quite honestly, I, I don't even use the, the settings on the camera itself. I uh, Like I was saying, I use the 6 Plus. It's a lot easier, actually, from the interface on the phone. You're literally just swiping, you know, you, you're on 1080p. But, uh, I mean... The, the new accessories they also came out with going really quick, you know, jumping back and forth. But uh, I have the the Frame 2 here, and you literally just pointed something out to me. On the Frame 2, where the hardware button is, the setting buttons, there's now, actually there still is, excuse me, the Wi-Fi button, which was to turn on the Wi-Fi. So, obviously, we're going to be waiting for a new frame to come out. And if you go to the um, GoPro website, actually, they have a new um, LCD backpack and the battery backpack. If you looked at it, you know, that's a really cool uh, thing. That I found out yesterday, actually. Absolutely. Is Iris guy muted? I'm not sure. I was just curious. I don't know, Iris guy. Are you back? <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, man. I'm just chilling on the beach. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I got a really quick question. I'm, I'm talking about performance and um, 4K. So. I, I, I know um, maybe not everybody follows Apple like I do. Apple came out with that uh, 5K display. I was wondering, what do you think about that, you know, the, the 5K iMac? Do you think you're going to be buying one for your Hero 4 so you can literally see, like, you know, the actual quality it can, it can perform? Well, actually, it's funny you say that because mine will be on my doorstep in a few days. I got oh, the... Wow. Uh, I got the 5K. I've got the currently. I have the Haswell iMac 27 inch. I've maxed it out with 32 32 gigs of memory and all that. But I'm selling that, and I've got the 5K. And the reason I the reason I upgraded to it, it wasn't the specs. I mean, obviously, I've I've got the maxed out Haswell, which is 3.5 gigahertz i7. I think the I think the uh, five the max specs for the five uh, 5K iMac that I got. I think it's four gigahertz. So that's yeah. kind of that's not that's a subtle upgrade. Uh, they did switch from uh, from Nvidia to AMD graphics, um, so that's you know I don't know if that's going to be better. You know I'm, I'm not too excited about that actually. In the past for for desktop computers before they were bought out by AMD, so you know historic. Mm -hmm. You think you think it's going to be better visual quality from I mean just from the graphics card itself? Do you think that's going to help a lot? Well, I mean Nvidia does sell um, I believe it's a 4K graphics card. I mean I I go in Nvidia because I have a I don't know if you heard about it, it's called an Nvidia Shield. It's actually a portable gaming device um, based on Android uh, KitKat. And I mean, the graphics on a 5-inch Android screen is out of this world. I mean, I like NVIDIA personally rather than AMD. But, you know, that's just personal preference. Yeah, I've I've been uh, at least in the past when I used when I use my desktop computers, I don't I don't play games anymore. But when I did, the the Nvidia has always seemed to be better uh, from a gaming perspective uh, for 3D rendering and whatnot. But it seemed like the AMD, the ATI, the ATI Radeon back in the days, what they called them, but uh, they were they always seemed to have sharper visual quality for uh, for for graphics editing and, and video. But I think with the 5K iMac, the thing obviously that I that prompted me to upgrade is the display because not only are you getting 4K but you're getting 5K so when you're editing exactly. you know you'll be, able to, you'll be able to see the 4K video in its full glory and you'll be able to you know you'll I, I don't know I mean it looks good on paper is it <laughs> is it something that I would say go out and upgrade to 5K iMac if you're not a if you're not a serious video content or, or photographer I would say no because the performance boost from a processing power perspective is in my opinion, somewhat insignificant, but well, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens, and I'll have that unboxing. I should have that unboxing hopefully, oh, okay. hopefully Sunday. 
Oh, okay, um, cool, cool. So yeah, really quick, like you say, I'm most likely, I'd say in a month, shy of a month or so, I'm going to most likely upgrade. I'm gonna, my videos are actually gonna substantially, you know, quality-wise, it's gonna skyrocket. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, obviously my room is my studio, but um, I'm thinking about, I have a bunk bed, so the bunk beds I'm thinking about going bye-bye, you know, there's nobody that sleeps on the top bunk, so. It's just a waste of space, but um, thinking about getting a nice little desk, you know, simplistic white desk. Like you see all the unboxers from YouTube that they got, and the nice little desktop, you know. But for now, I think that's that's more feasible because a Mac Pro itself, it, you know, it has 4K, but uh, I mean, it's the same price, just the, you know, just the processing unit itself as the iMac, and everything's built into the to the display itself. And if you want to really get technical. The Mac Pro, you need to buy a 4K display to see it in its full glory, and a 4K display is going to cost you about four thousand dollars from Apple's website, which is not, you know, not a pretty penny. You know, Code Three. It's funny you just said that about the getting, the, you know, getting the new table and everything. You know, it's not about, you know, what's out yeah, there. Yeah, that's the thing about the. It's about the product, you know, and 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 you know what you're talking about, obviously. So it's about getting the product out there. It doesn't matter what the backdrop is and all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate your channel and, uh, and what you do, so keep it up. I would like to see the upgraded studio, obviously, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate what you do. And I, I did a uh, summertime Ken on that as well. Iris Scott, what is that furry animal? Oh, we're getting uh, we're getting invaded by a bobcat right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just running into like some technical difficulties here with my microphone. <laughs> That's all right. Well, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to share one other thing. You know, while we're on the topic of GoPro, obviously that's what this is about. Um, and Iris guy, you brought this up a little while ago, but. Uh, we talked about the battery difference between, you know, the three plus and the four, and that you know you always run into that. There's some, you know, luckily it didn't change the size of the camera, the casings, and all that still work the same. The battery is different, and for, um, you know, when you buy the GoPro, they give you one battery. Yeah. And if you're like me, you know, I need what when when I went to Bermuda, I took uh, ten extra three plus batteries. Oh wow. With, wow. solar, with solar chargers and everything, because I like to film everything that I do. So uh, I like to film everything that I see. So, um, and this is the old three plus uh, wasabi kit, and I think Iris guy brought this up, brought up wasabi earlier. But um, these are <laughs> extremely cheap uh, that you can get. You can actually get them uh, through Snagbear, um, Snagbear.com. I know for this is the old. <laughs> Plus, I just got the four, and, I, and I'm I'm running off of my one GoPro four battery for now, yeah. getting ready to. Uh, but I hear that I don't know if they're up on Snagbear yet or not. But um, uh, Wasabi's making this same contraption here for the GoPro four battery, and you know it comes with a wall plug-in charger, uh, and and Irix guy, you might be able to talk about this more. Two extra batteries, things like that, and it's it's very affordable. Um, much more affordable than going to your local, you know, Best Buy or whatever and getting a, you know, a GoPro battery. So uh, you might be able to talk about that a little bit more, but um, I know that they're either coming out with uh, batteries and, and kind of a kit for the four or already have come out. I don't know. Well, i got to say something really quick. What you're saying about Best Buy, the one thing, the one rule I have is for Best Buy is yeah, every time uh, I go in there. Oh, I'm go sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
can you hear? Oh, he, he had a mute. All right, really, really quick, I'm going to say this. Um, to have no, go, one go ahead, Coach. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. One rule for a Best Buy, and that rule is every time I go in there, I have to spend something, but I never spend whatever it says. So let's say the GoPro batteries are $19.99. I never spend that. Between me being the you know Best Buy Elite member and getting all the you know coupons and whatnot, I also price match on Amazon. So let's say the batteries $11 on Amazon per se. I'll show it to the cashier. She'll he or she will bring the battery down to 11 bucks, and then I'll take whatever the certificate is off. So one day, if you guys follow my Instagram, I got two 64 SanDisk micro SDs and um, two packages of the adhesive mounts. Now, I remind you, the SanDisk are like $100 each. I ended up walking out with all that for $99. I mean, you can't beat that, you know? Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. You can't beat that price. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. You just gotta learn how to, you know, go through the ropes. <laughs> well, I'd like to get off the topic just really, really quick to talk to summertime can really quick. I want to know how, you know, how that hurricane was out there in Bermuda. I mean, me and Eric I did that emergency preparedness live show and you know I think yeah, I did that it was uh it was an eye opener, obviously, you know, and I, I'm wearing all my Bermuda. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> car here, you know, that, that 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 we brought back, but uh, luckily it wasn't as bad as as people expected. I mean, it was a, it was a hurricane. You know, it was a Category Four at one point out there. Wow. And, um, it was downgraded when it actually made landfall. It was a two, um, so it wasn't as bad as people expected. Power was out. Um, and I, I don't know if you've ever been to Bermuda Code 3, but, I mean, there, yeah. there weren't a whole lot of roads uh, that, that that navigate the islands, and uh, oh, the wow. premier had said that not a single <laughs> road was passable. I mean, there were trees down, power lines down all over the roads. So they did a great job cleaning cleaning it up, and, um, you know, it, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. Uh, than it than it was. It was you know. Here's what's the amazing thing about that hurricane was that Bermuda from tip to tip it's shaped kind of like a fish hook. Yeah. <laughs> and from tip to tip is is 22 miles long. And and Irix guy, we actually did a moped ride that full 22 miles, uh, tip to tip on it and back. Wow. And and GoPro it too, which was really cool. Uh, but 22 miles tip to tip, and here you have a massive, you know, Category 2 hurricane in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and the eye was a direct hit in the center of that 22 miles, just just hit oh. it directly. So it's like there's a lot of space out there for it to hit, and, and it happened to hit directly on on the islands of Bermuda. So, um, so it was it – was, thought to be that it was, you know, structurally Bermuda is so sound. I mean, their buildings are built solidly. Um, you know, you just got to worry about water erosion and, and, and things like that. But, luckily, you know, obviously power outages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but luckily this was not as bad as what, what people expected it to be. So um, it was an experience for sure, but glad to be back. Well, I, I just want to say ahead of time as well, uh, I, I know I live in New York, uh, so we're coming up on the second anniversary of Hurricane Sandy, which was definitely a, a tragedy in itself and definitely an experience. But um, I remember some of the time, Ken, you were saying, do some more live shows. And I want to be the first to invite you and Irish Sky back for a second one about Hurricane Sandy. I don't know, maybe if you guys like to, to join, possibly. Absolutely. You know, I, I, uh, hurricanes are not something we like to talk about, obviously, but... Uh, you know, it's it's a part of nature. It's part of what happens. So I'd, I'd be glad to join you on that. Oh, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> is Irish guy back, or is he still is he still going? I can't really. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll join too, man. Just toss me an invite. No problem, bud. So also getting off the topic. I mean, you know, I always get off topic with these live shows, but um. Irish guy, you think about upgrading to the new iPads, iPad Air 2 and the iPad Mini 3? Well, my thoughts on the uh, on the other things that Apple released is that, well, the iPad Mini 2, I don't need that. 
because my wife's got an iPad Mini, or is it iPad Mini three? It's it's yeah, iPad Mini. My, my wife's got the iPad Mini with Retina, so I don't need okay. that. I don't need a tablet myself, but it's the iPad Mini two or three. Three iPad Mini three and iPad Air two. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so I don't need the Air because I mean it's just it's a I've got the iPad Mini I can borrow if I need it. The iPad Mini with Retina. I don't need the <clears throat> iPad Air two because well it's just it's a bigger tablet. And honestly, man, since I've got the iPhone six, here's my thing: since I've got the iPhone six plus and the MacBook Air, I have no need for anything else because what's that? So yeah, I, I'm having trouble. Yeah, it's, it's like breaking up, you know, on my screen. Yeah, I, th I think we're having. Uh, I think I'm having some some bandwidth issues here in 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 my studio. So I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to reboot, work with the team, and get the network rebooted because it's kind of it's kind of uh, chopping up. Y'all y'all are chopping up. It wasn't that bad in the beginning, and now it's. But we're we're getting close to eight o'clock. So what we should do, uh, if we can all join, maybe in a in a few weeks we can get together for another live show and and okay. uh, and talk about our our experiences with the Hero Four after uh, after more hands on time with it. And and I'd like to thank both of y'all for joining. And uh, I know it's kind of short notice, but it's uh, it's good to get together and and just uh, test out this Google Hangouts on air and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the little bobcat's loose. <laughs> uh, are, we, uh, are we signing off for the evening? Hey, Sean Cunery says, hey, he said, <laughs> what's that? Cool. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're get we're getting close to eight o'clock. So, does anybody have anything else before we before we conclude? Yeah, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, so, I, I guess really that's it. You know. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to thank everybody too, and uh, you know, just much more excitement to come. GoPro just continues to come out with the best of the best, the best product. And uh, I, I just like to reiterate what I said before. There's a GoPro for everybody, and uh, it's just a matter of what, what you know, your entry level into this. I'll, I'll give you a quick, just to kind of wrap up. Um, back in 2012, when my channel first originated, at the end of 2012, um, and, and this is on. I'm, this is an honest, honest story. GoPro got me outside to do outside activities and to do outdoor activities. I grew up doing stuff like that anyway. Um, but, you know, you graduate college, you get to your job, and you just, you know, you, you, you don't pursue outdoor activities as much. GoPro was, you know, the camera gets you outside to do stuff, to film, to film stuff, to film what you're doing, to be able to have other people see what you can see. And I bought a kayak, and I went kayak fishing, and and, and I bought a, a DJI Phantom drone, and I droned everything, and I, you know. So <laughs> it, it's it's uh, it's a motivator to get you outside. It's 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 more than just the camera. Um, it, it really is. Uh, it's very innovative, and and they're always on top of. You know, they they've captured this market very well, and. Uh, you know, it continues to be, you know, the thing is research and development, they continue to come out with the best product for what they do, and I applaud them for that, and uh, I applaud them for continuing to get me outside and outdoors and, and, and loving the outdoors and being able to share that with my fans uh, and my subscribers, and there's just gonna, it's just going to get better from here. Well, really quick, actually, you know, you, I, I, you know, we, you know, it's the end of the live show. i got to spit this out really quick. There was actually a news report. Um, down here in up here in New York, actually, about the GoPro, saying that GoPro, you know, it, it changed people's lives. Like, 
the things you'd never think you were doing, actually you're now doing with the GoPro. You know, it's it's your technically your lifeline now. Like you would never think of diving off of a cliff. Now you do it to record it to show your friends. It's a, it's a brand new experience for everyone. Let's put it that way. Absolutely, and we've had a couple of cliff diving uh, videos uh, coming up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Irix guy is there. If I, we're going to give him a little bit of a delay. Irix guy, are you there? Yeah, let's give him a delay. <clears throat> yeah, summertime, Ken. I'm I'm kind of breaking up, and and I wanted to say too, in closing, uh, sorry about breaking that uh, that seat back table on your on your airplane, man. <laughs> hey, no worries, no worries, brother. Really quick, I mean, if you guys don't mind, you want to say like two minutes after the last show, we could discuss maybe another one, possibly, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, really cool. So are we signing off for the night, Eric Sky, you know, uh, for good? Yeah, let's do it. So uh, thanks. Yeah, I think I think we better because our and, – and I'm going to work this bandwidth issue out before the next show because we're getting a lot of clipping. But thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, share this video with others and stay tuned uh, not only to Irish Guys Live Show Episode 3 that will be coming soon, uh, but also be on the lookout for uh, Code 3 production. And, and I'm sure when, when that's scheduled, I'll, I'll be promoting that uh, uh, by way of uh, my Facebook page, Google+, Plus, etc. as well. So you can find it on uh, Code 3 Productions page, and you can also find the notification here. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and sign off. and. Uh, and uh, be sure to subscribe to all of our channels. You, you can see us here in this uh, in this live YouTube Hangouts on Air. So so be sure to subscribe to all of us, share all of our channels, and stay tuned for future content. And uh, y'all have a good day. <laughs>